Hi everyone. In the previous sessions, uh, we had learned about the basics of genetics, what genetics means, and also uh, regarding Mendel, a brief history regarding Mendel, and the reasons behind his success. Today, let's focus our attention on Mendel's experiments. The core area we are focusing on today, that is Mendel's experiments. As you all know, for any experiment that we do, there will be an aim, principle, procedure, we'll get some results, we'll interpret the results, there will be some conclusions, right? But as I've told you here, Mendel was not doing actually an experiment, he didn't have any aim as such. But he had followed a set of procedures and as I've told you, in order to uh, gain that result, that interpretation, he had used statistical analysis, mathematical logic. So, let us move on to the experiment today. What he has done, let me explain to you. So, what is his uh, uh, sample, as I've told you? Samples were true breeding pea plant varieties. Okay. So, why his, he took that uh, pea plant varieties, he focused on seven main characteristics, seven characteristics of the pea plant. Let us see one by one what those characteristics that he focused on were. First character or trait was stem height. Next one, flower position. Flower position means where on that plant is the flower. Okay, next one, Flower color, next pod color, pod shape, seed color and seed shape. So here, stem height, he saw that some of the plants were very tall, some of them were short or dwarf. So what are plants he observed, they were either tall or dwarf. So we can see here the character or the trait height has got two forms, tall and dwarf. So we are moving on to next terms, that is character and their forms, or traits and their forms. So these forms are the pairs of contrasting traits. So in the last video I have told you, he has taken opposing traits, two opposing traits. So this is what is the explanation for that. So here, what is the trait height? What are the opposing traits? Forms, tall and dwarf. Similarly for the next trait, flower position. The flower is either axial or terminal. What is that? Terminal, the word terminal. You know term and examinations, you all do that. Is it? Terminal means end. So if the flowers, if, if this is a plant and flowers are there at the end of the plant, you say the flower position is terminal. Okay. But if in this plant, the flowers are coming from these areas, axis, you call it as axial. So flower position, you observed the flowers are either on the terminal part and in some pea plants, it is there on the axial part. Next character, flower color. Some of the plants had violet flowers. Some of them had white flowers. Then next one, pod color. What is this pod? You know, most of the pea plants, okay, this is the this is a pod. This is a pod of tamarind tree. Inside this pod there will be seeds. Okay, so this pod you can call it as like a fruit. Inside this there will be seeds. Okay, so this is pod. And here in the pea plant, he observed the pod color. There, there were green colored pods as well as there were also yellow colored pods. So all these things, these two things are what? These two, two things that I have explained to you are the different forms of the trait or contrasting traits. Okay. Then next one is pod shape. Pod shape is either inflated or constricted. Hope it is clear from the drawing here. You can see here, inflated pod will be very clear. 
but constricted pod you can see here uh, the constrictions so it is either inflated or there will be some constrictions okay next one seed inside the pod you have seeds so here you observe the seed color as well some of the seeds were yellow some of them were green next one seed shape some of the seeds were perfectly round in shape some of the seeds they had wrinkles on them so these are the seven characters it is very easy for you to remember as well i'll just tell you the plant first first character is height plants are either tall or dwarf on the plant what do you have flowers so what did you take the position of the flower axial terminal as well as the color of the flower violet or white then the flower will transform into what fruit fruit here is the pod so next character that he has taken is regarding the pod two things of the pod one is pod color green or yellow another one is the shape of the pod either inflated or constricted then inside the pod what is a seed so again two characters of seed what are they pod uh, seed shape and seed color so these are the seven characters i hope it is now easy for you to remember as well isn't it the seven characters that he has taken you need not by heart just imagine a plant and it will come to your mind okay so these are the contrasting pairs of characters that he has taken now let's move on to the core experiment step 1 he has selected 14 true breeding pea plant varieties what is this 14 true breeding pea plant varieties that is what is written over here seven characters and two forms each so 14 and what kind of plants true breeding as i told you true breeding means what they produce stable generation stable uh, characteristics generation after generation and how it is obtained true breeding plants it is obtained through repeated self pollination okay so likewise he selected 14 true breeding pea plant varieties next he did cross hybridization next step is cross hybridization okay so what kind of cross hybridization he has taken a plant which is having axial flower violet a uh, flower color this having green color pod inflated in shape inflated pod shape yellow color uh, seeds and round seed shape so a plant is having all these characters he has taken two plants both of the, both these plants are having this the, the, the characters that i have written over here but they changed only in one they differed only in one character one plant was tall another plant was dwarf so what kind of plant did he take there for the experiment for cross hybridization he had taken two plants which were similar in all the six characters except one character so here as an example i am telling you at one character let us take it as height one plant was tall another was dwarf but rest of the characters were all similar in both the plants got it now he has taken two plants and what he is going to do now cross hybridization from the word i think you might have understood cross pollination he has taken the anthers from the dwarf plant and he put it onto the stigma of the tall plant after emasculation you might have learned the procedures of uh, cross pollination after emasculation from the tall plant he has taken the pollen grains from the dwarf plant and he dusted onto the stigma of the tall plant it can be done vice versa that means pollen grains can be taken from the tall plant and dusted onto the stigma of the dwarf plant as well so this is cross pollination so step 2 is cross hybridization or cross pollination between two plants that have all the six characteristics similar and they differ only in one character okay then step 3 after cross pollination he waited for the new plant to come out for the for the seeds to be formed 
and the seeds he had sown and from the seeds new plant came out. So that new plant which came out is the first generation, isn't it? Here for that first generation the term used is filial generation 1 or F1 or first filial generation. So after cross hybridization what you get you call them as first Filial generation. This is the new term. First filial. After cross hybridization of two true breeding plants. The, gen the generation that you get is first filial generation or F1 generation. He was waiting. What kind of plant is coming out? Whether the plants of the F1 are tall or are they dwarf? He was waiting patiently. And he saw... All the plants of the F1 generation were tall, tall, tall. There were not even a single dwarf plant. He was, uh, he was actually confused. Okay, what happened to the dwarf character? Nothing is expressed here. All the things that are expressed are only tall. He did not stop his experiment there. He moved on. He focused on the next step. He self-pollinated the F1. What is that self-pollination? Still self-pollination of F1. That means he had taken the anther of the F1 variety and dusted onto the stigma of the F1 variety itself of the same plant. Pollination is done with the same anther to the same flower to the same plant. You call it as self-pollination. So his next step, step 4 was self-pollinating the F1 variety and from there the next generation is coming out and that next generation he called it as F2. So step 4 self-pollinated F1 to get F2. Okay now again he was waiting what kind of plant is coming out from the F2 generation whether all are tall or all are dwarf or is there tall plant and dwarf plant like that like that he was waiting. And he got the results. His result was one fourth of the plants were dwarf, three fourth were tall. That means if he got four plants in the F2, among those four plants, among those four, one was dwarf. All the three, all the rest were tall. Only one was dwarf, all the rest were tall. So, he understood that there are some factors, there are some factors that is passed on from the parent to the progeny. Okay, and these factors remain suppressed in some generation and become expressed in some other generations. He was also saying that these factors will be there in the gametes. But he didn't know what those factors were. He was just calling them as factors, factors, factors. Later, after uh, his experiments and all, after he had published all these experiments, results, actually no, no, nobody uh, took initiative or nobody took interest in uh, giving it wide publicity, his results. But then three different scientists in three different parts of the world rediscovered this. And they understood and then they understood that these factors that mental told are actually genes. Now we know them as genes. But these genes and their properties were actually found out by Mendel years back. And that is why truly Mendel is regarded as father of genetics. So here one more point. I told you one fourth were dwarf, three fourth were tall, isn't it? One important point, there was no blending of character. No blending of character means there were no plant having intermediate height. Neither tall nor dwarf like that, there were no plants having intermediate height. That was also another crucial observation of Gregor Mendel. Okay, so here I hope you might have understood the steps. He selected the 14 true breeding plant varieties. And then he did cross-hybridization, cross-hybridization between plants. 
that dif that uh, that are similar in all the six characters but differ in only one character and he got the first generation he only one character was expressed in the next generation both the characters were expressed but in different ratios okay now as i've told you all the six varieties were kept the same but only one character was different in the first one isn't it in the next experiment what he did is he made took all tall plants and all this character 3 4 5 6 were kept similar but the plants differed only in character number 2 that is flower position some plants were having axial flower some plants were having terminal flower rest of the six properties were same in them okay then he did step 2 that is cross hybridization and again after cross hybridization what we get is f1 generation in the f1 generation he saw that only one character is expressed okay and after f1 what is the next step self pollination of f1 after self pollination whatever you get you call it as f2 generation and in the f2 generation what happened both the characters were expressed isn't it and in what ratio 1/4 of one character 3/4 of the next character always this 3 was what 3 3 was what the character that is expressed in the f1 generation is having that more number and the character which was suppressed in the f1 generation is having that less number but both were expressed in the f2 generation after self pollination likewise he did with all the seven varieties keeping one variety different rest of the characters same he did for all the seven varieties and for all these seven varieties after cross hybridization f1 are then self pollination of f1 f2 in the f2 he got the same ratio 3 of one character and 1 of the other character three of which character the character which is expressed in the f1 was more in number in f2 and which was not expressed in f1 was less in number in f2 the same thing he got so he came to some general conclusions this is the this is the importance of keeping statistical analysis and mathematical logic that he could come to some general conclusions that i have told you the reason behind his success okay so with this general conclusion he came to the uh, notion that there are some factors that is present in the parent plant that is expressed in one generation will be suppressed in the other generation and those factors now we know them as genes and truly mendel is regarded as father of genetics he did not extend his experiments with just these uh, four steps he continued his experiment by changing the characters well we will go through those experiments in the coming videos thank you for now